Well, 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 well. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to Blue King Crabs Gaming Channel. Where today, today we're taking a look at my puzzle that I have created here. Uh, this is a 3D printed puzzle, and the inspiration came from a video that I watched back in uh, 2015. I don't know if the video was created in 2015, but I know that I watched it in 2015 because I created a version of this that was more fantasy themed, that had like magnets and was made out of foam core and, and stuff like that. That was the original video too. Was The original video was used for Dungeons and Dragons, Pathfinder, you know, whatever. And it was fantasy geared as well. This, I took a different approach. I made it sci-fi theme. And what I want to do today is I want to show you uh, how it works and maybe how you can utilize this in, in a sci-fi game. And of course, I will try to put, remember to put in the description, uh, the path or uh, the Thingiverse link to all of these files. They're free. They're um, supportless. You don't have to worry about it. And... <coughs> yeah, so anyway, let's get right into it. So, what you can usually do, this is what I do anyway, you can just put the, the chips down in any orientation that you want. Kind of like this, alright? Actually, let's do something like, like this. No, no. Do I want like that? Maybe like that? Yeah, no, I see it looks too organized. Oh yeah, let's do something like this. Let's do that, like, I just put it sideways. Oh, maybe like... Actually, I want some, I want some... Ooh, yeah, let's try that. Okay. <laughs> see, this is kind of fun when you're, when you're making these. Um, okay. So what you do w when calculating the different, the different numbers, you do... The long and the tall. You can do it on either side. doesn't really matter. They should be exactly the same. And what you're doing here is gathering all the numbers and then taking a picture of the actual, like, positions. And what you'll do is you'll give the player the numbers on the side. You can give them as many or as few as you want. The fewer numbers you give them, the easier this thing will be to, to solve because this a lot when you remove numbers it allows you to have another way of solving the puzzle theoretically uh, not always but in a, on average it allow the players to have another way of solving it. so what you do you when you look at the chip you look at the chip long ways so this counts as a single point this counts as two points this counts as four this counts as three now when looking at the rows going down, whenever they're going horizontal like this, you count the two in each row. So for this, since it's going vertical, it only counts as a one. So you put a one. This, there's a two. So you put a two. There's a two and a three in this vertical line. So we took put a total of five. Same for here, five. This one, only three. This one, only four. And then we go up the side. Three, zero, right? Four. And then one, five. One, five. And then look at this. One, two, three. Okay. So what this does is it allows you to have a full picture. This is the actual answer key. So if the player ever gets, you know... You don't, you don't know where to start or whatever, but you have to give the players these numbers here and here. The other thing that you could do is you could leave hints throughout the dungeon or wherever you're at the spaceship where these positions go, and you can give them like you know A1 or A1, A, A B, C, D, E, F, you know what I mean, and then give them a, a, a number value going down. Either way, but when you actually get up to the the hacking part, you just have to give them some numbers. So if we give them, let's say we give them three numbers because that's that's a pretty low number and it would make it very easy for somebody to solve. So let's give them a one, this zero, and then maybe, maybe this five right here. So if we take all the, all the numbers off, right? 
The only numbers that we that you give the players that they can see is one, zero, and five. And they have these these chips to try and reproduce these numbers in the correlating sectors. So they'll probably go right away saying one, right? Well, one that doesn't work on that because there's a zero. But let's shift it up like this. Now there's a one and there's still zero here. And we're one closer to the five. Now when you put a one down and you need a five, well you only need a four. So we put a chip there. So we have the one, zero, and five. Now they have two extra chips. They just need to put it somewhere that doesn't interfere with the five or the one. So we can't put it there because that interferes with the one. We can't put it here because that interferes with the zero, but they could put it here, they could put it here, they could put anywhere they want as long as it doesn't interfere with those three numbers. Now, the more numbers you give, the closer and more exact they have to have to your original answer key. And what you can do when a player gets stuck, even on, let's, let's say you do give them four numbers or whatever. So let's try, let's try adding a number, another number. The more numbers you add, Let's add the three down here at the bottom. The more numbers you add, the closer that it has to represent the exact same thing as you had before. I, I think I already mentioned that, but, you know, just keeping it up here. So we can't put a four here because there's a three. However, we might be able to put the four this way. And now we have the three line is still open. So we can put the three line here, except it's a zero. So we can put it this way, right? And now we have the three. We could put the one right here, because we can't have the zero down there, right? And then that leaves us right here. That leaves us right there, where it doesn't interfere with the three, it doesn't interfere with the one, the zero, and the five. So that's another answer. So you can see. But again, the more numbers you add, the closer and closer and closer it has to represent your original answer, which makes it more complex. So the other thing that you could do is when a player gets stuck, you could have them roll for their skill check or whatever. And what you could do is you could remove a number because it was too complicated, or you can give them an inspiration, right? And give them an answer to where a piece goes. So they'll be able to find it or, you know, solve the answer. In my opinion, though, I think... If they roll for a skill, I think removing a number is probably easier. But, you know, know your players, know what they like, um, and, and that will help them out. But usually, in my opinion, if, they're, if they get stuck on, like, four numbers, it's because it might be too complex. So removing a number will reduce the complexity, hopefully allowing them to solve the puzzle. And... There's a few ways that, yeah, you can do this. You can do it as a team or, or, or whatever, and maybe more people helping out can and figure it out. Me, personally, with this particular setup as it being sci-fi, I'm hoping that only the tech-savvy person, uh, class-wise, would be the one trying to hack, right? Uh, and getting the actual job done. So I hope this was kind of cool, inspirational. Uh, again, I'll try to remember to put the... I'll try to remember to put all the files up on Thingiverse and then put a link down in, in the description below. But, yeah, I hope everybody likes this video. And, and yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Out.